In this video, we'll learn to attach clothing to a character that's already been rigged. This is part of the complete character tutorial series, but if you haven't been following along, you'll need a character that's been rigged. And then you'll need clothing that either fits, but if your clothing doesn't fit, that's okay because this video will cover that too. Okay, let's get started. We're going to create a set of basic animations with the body moving, so that way when we attach the clothes, we can make sure it fits okay. If you've already got a set of animations like this from the last tutorial in this series, then you can skip this part. But if you're, if you're just jumping in now, this is how to create those animations. Give me a second here to um, delete all the current keyframes. Okay, so this is a basic rundown of how uh, animations work with the Rigify rig. Grab your rig, go to object mode and pose mode. So now you're in pose mode. Um, hit N to open the tool panel. So, so grab one of your bones here and then go to, go to item. And this panel here is Rigify's generic um, control area. So you can turn on different layers that have the bones that uh, the controls that you want to control. So we're going to use just a basic one. So it's face, torso, arm IK, and leg IK. And that's enough. They also have these more granular controls or FK controls, but this is enough for us for the most part. And the way you set a keyframe is you select a bone here. Let's grab the hand. So you grab a, an, a bone control here, hit I, and you can set a keyframe for location, rotation, or scale, or you can set all three at once. So I'm just going to set all three at once. You can see in the timeline here, it created a yellow keyframe. And so that's how you know that this object, when you click on it, has a keyframe. Let's set this one here too. I, location, rotation, scale. Let's go forward 10 frames in time. So we're going, if you put your mouse over the timeline and hit the right arrow, this is now moving forward in time. It's like playing a video, but she's not moving because she, we haven't made her move yet. Okay, so at frame 10, let's grab her hand here and hit G to move it out. With the Rigify rig, make sure you don't stretch it too much. Um, it can cause some problems, unless you're trying to go for that look. Okay, let's rotate it. Okay, and so you can now we've set a keyframe for this hand at this location and rotation at frame 10. And since we're in mirror mode, this hand came along with it. So now, if you go into the timeline and hit back arrow, you can see that we now have some animation going. Yay. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing for all of this. This is probably not the best way to animate, but for this simple uh, animation, that's what we're going to do. So hit A to select everything, then I, location, rotation, scale. So now everything is set at frame 10 for this location. So let's, and let's also, let's hide the, um, hide the hair. Let's go to solid mode like that. It, it moves faster. And then let's go to frame 20 and let's move the hands. Let's move our hands up, rotate it. If you hit rotate once, it rotates it um, based on how you're looking at it. If you hit rotate R twice, you can rotate it like a, kind of like a trackball. And move your limbs to the maximum extent that your limbs will ever go during your animation, whoever's animating it. However, keep in mind with this basic Rigify rig, the shoulders can only do so much. Okay, it's pretty good. Let's set everything. I, location, rotation, scale. So do this a few times just to give you a feel for how it works. And then I'm just going to go through all of it really fast. You can uh, reset the pose by hitting Alt R, Alt G, Alt S, and then double R to move them just forward like that. And you can also scrub through and see how it looks. Oh, if you get this is always annoying. Um, if you're using Euler for your uh, rotation, 
you get the hand twisting sometimes. So a quick fix is you can just, since we're mirrored, you can just hit R and it snaps it in the position it should be. And whenever you see it popping, just hit R again. And so this way it looks okay. This is not the correct way to fix it, but for this simple project here, it's it's okay because we're our hands are mirrored. Yeah, so that, that's that's annoying. Okay, that's looking all right. It's looking okay there. Maybe let's make the arms go back too. Let's grab this, Alt R, double hit R to make it go back a bit. I don't think your limbs can actually go that far. Okay. Forward, up. And let's go back to down. that a i oh you see i think i forgot to set everything else here a i location rotation scale and okay now let's do the uh let's do the hips next so i'll just fast forward this because i think everybody gets the idea Okay, so here we're seeing a bit of a problem. This, uh, there's too much overlap from the, uh, the calf to the thigh. So we can tweak that a bit. So let's go to leg tweak. Okay, you get these little spheres. You can use these and hit G to move it. But let's first go back to here and set these in its default position. A, um, I, located, location, rotation, scale. And then go to here. Let's just move this a bit to alleviate some of that pinching right there. Doesn't help much. Like this, you might need to actually use some corrective shape keys, but this helps a little, a little bit. set that and then I think I think that's all we need here we got the, the legs bending torso torso hips arms we could do maybe a bit more but this is the basic idea ankles yeah it's good okay I think it's good enough GRS I, location, rotation, and scale. Okay, so now we have an animation all set up so we can attach our clothes. Okay, now let's go and add the clothing. Typically, when you are trying to add some clothes from a different model, uh, it's not going to fit your character, so you need to do that. So let's, let's go and look at how to make this clothes fit pretty quickly. So let's go to edit mode, A. Let's just roughly bring it down. Um, so it's close, and you see it's not fitting in the back either, so let's rotate it a bit. So just kind of kind of get it close. And then, let's see, let's set the... Let's, let's make the origin of the sweatshirt match our character. So the origin is this little orange dot. You can hit... And let's move the 3D cursor to the origin. So hit Shift S and uh, cursor to selected. So it's cursor to selected, which is two. There you go. So now let's grab our object and go to object, set origin, origin, origin to 3D cursor like that. Okay, so that just keeps things nice and tidy. Let's also set the scale. 
So control A and all transforms. And this resets the scale of this, um, this object. I think it was actually fine. Just make sure it's all at zero. And let's turn off our animation. We don't want that. Let's go here and X and delete uh, and keyframes. Okay, so that's all zeroed out. Now, a good way to make clothes fit is to go to sculpt mode, go to object and sculpt mode. Make sure Dino Topo is turned off. And then I find that this, um, this elastic tool here is really useful. So click that, hit F to make it bigger or smaller. You can hit Shift F to make that stronger or weaker. Um, one thing to watch out for is if you scale it, you see it's moving the sleeve, but it's also moving the body, and you don't want that. So what you can do is hide things with face uh, face sets. So it's you can see it's different colors. It's already got face sets assigned, but let's just make sure they're good. So do initiate face sets by UV seams, and it looks the same, but it's broken up all the UV, uh, face sets by the UVs. So this is going to depend on whoever makes the clothing that you're importing, if they've got the seams cut the way you want it or not. Um, so just experiment with different ways of, of um, initiating face sets. Where'd it go? Like material, it's all one material. That's no good. So let's go back to UV seams. And once you have the seams assigned, hold Shift and hit H. And you can hide parts of the mesh and just keep holding shift H okay so now when we modify the sleeves we won't be modifying the body but with this technique you want to be careful about modifying the part where what's visible meets what's invisible because you get weird deformations so focus more on the parts that are away from where it connects so let's go ahead and do that here you can also do um, slash to hide everything else except for what you're working on to make it easier to pick things. And I'm going to go pretty quickly. Um, you really should take more time on this. I would normally take more time on this. Let's get the inside of the arm here. You can see it's way too big over here, but I'm just going to leave that for now. Oh, and I forgot to mention, make sure this um, mirror is turned on, so that way it affects both sides at once. Okay, let's just make sure the other side looks all right. It doesn't always, I don't think this sweatshirt is symmetrical, so sometimes the other side is not working. Uh, if you know your first side is okay, you can edit the second side, but make sure you turn off mirror and just tweak it a bit so it fits okay okay now let's alt H and then let's hit um, shift H to hide the sleeves now and do the same thing let's uh, just sculpt this middle part to fit nicely going pretty rough here just want to make sure everything is outside Oh, I should have mirror turned on here. Okay, so that's pretty good. Alt H. Now you can see if we go to um, x-ray mode, you can see it's way too big. So we're going to try and shrink it to make it fit. So let's try. This is a technique that works sometimes, but let's just show you so you can have it as one of your tools. Okay, so let's go back into object mode. Make sure the sweatshirt's selected. Go to modifiers and let's go to shrink wrap. Click shrink wrap. Click this little eyedropper and click on our mesh. Okay, so then the whole thing just shrinks down. You can see it, it doesn't work super, super good. And then sometimes outside surface works good. I guess it's not doing much. And then you can play with the offset to see how far you want this to sit from the body. So I'm going to do something like 0.005. And then 
So, I mean, and clearly this doesn't look good. And you can see by how it's pulling that it's, um, it's not gonna look good at all once we have the textures turned on. So you can see it's, it's just doing weird things, but it is fitting the body now. As you can see, our body mesh is pretty close to the sweatshirt now. And then what you can do is with this shrink wrap modifier, go to save as shape key. So turn off this, um, this modifier and then go to your shape key and you can adjust it from full off to full on. And so just kind of like play with this to get it as close as you kind of like think feels all right too far and it'll, it'll mess with all of your UVs and it makes it lose all of its detail. Um, too little, it's the same thing. So kind of go somewhere that you, you kind of like, like, I think that's okay. We'll have to fix this thing there. You can check it in x-ray mode and see how much. So there's obviously the chest is a lot bigger um, and the sweatshirt. But I think if you push it any more, you'll just lose all the detail. So I'm going to actually reduce it a bit like that. And then go to um, apply to basis. Okay, so now that is the actual shape of this mesh. And then you have to go back into sculpt mode and just manually shape everything until it fits nicely. For that, this tool is also useful. You hit the N key, go to the tool, hit the subtract key here, set this to around 0.15 or so. It's probably a good idea to save this first, and then you go and just brush over it until it feels like it's the right size. Um, and this will work better. You can go to x-ray mode, make sure your mirror is turned on. Switchers are kind of bulky, so that's kind of good in a way. I think the back, I'm not sure why that blew through. You hit the N key here, changes to add, and you can add. And this tool, unlike elastic, it only affects what you're, you're uh, working on, so it won't affect the sleeves. So just kind of go through and like, you know, catch the side views. You can see how bulky things are from the side better. And just shrink this whole thing until it feels like it's a good size. So I'm just going to go and do that now. It's, it's um, nice to toggle from wireframe, uh, transparent on and off as you're doing this. I think Alt-Z might be a custom hotkey but you can just toggle it here too. I feel like up here needs to get smaller. In areas where we have seams, um, be careful with shrinking it too much because you might mess up the detail. So in that case, you could go back to the elastic tool and just pull stuff in. It's kind of a slow manual process, but it's, it's kind of peaceful and relaxing too. Okay, I think that's kind of, oh, maybe, too much here. You, you could um, hold shift to smooth, but that'll um, mess your textures up. So if you click shift and smooth it, you know, it'll, it'll kind of smooth without little, little bumps, but then it messes up the textures. So just be really careful with that. If your computer's not fast enough like mine, you get little lags with your mouse cursor and it might snap down by accident. Okay. I think that's pretty good. So that's, that's kind of quickly how you can shape things to fit. Let's check the armpit. It usually has problems. Yeah. It looks like the armpits overlapping. So here you can use shift and, and oops, let's reduce the shift. So the shift is actually smooth. So click smooth. Let's reduce this down to like 0.2 then go back to elastic. So now when you hold shift, it won't be as, as fast. It's still kind of fast. And, and even though shift kind of messes with the, uh, will mess with the textures, the UV mapping a bit, it does work pretty good in this situation where you're trying to like make two parts kind of separate. You just want to get like a little bit of separation. 
check it on the inside to see. You can see right here it's overlapping, so I'm going to reduce this and hold shift a bit. And I think that should be okay. Maybe a bit more there. Okay, so now we don't have very much overlap. Um, we have a, a sub D modifier, so we can turn that off and just check it this way too. Sometimes when you're uh, sculpting like this with the sub D turned on, you get really extreme um, shapes with your uh, underlying mesh so just make sure you don't have like like this is probably not good here so you can go to um, this one here this hook tool turn off mirror this has a smaller radius of influence yeah, okay that's all right okay so that's uh that's one way to make clothes fit Let's go to object mode and let's finally attach our clothes to our rig. So click our clothes, shift click our rig, control P to set parent to automatic weights. And there you go. Let's scrub through our animation and see how it fits. And it's it's okay. We've got some weird stuff going on here. Um, so that's not super nice. So there's a um, another way to do this, but you can really mess things up. I have done this a few times. So let's do this little trick so you don't mess yourself up. Main body, go to here and shift D, duplicate that, hide the main body, call this body for weight paint. Okay, so so you, you could uh you could mess up your main bot the weight painting for your main body and find out a couple days later and it's just a, it's a mess because you have to redo all this work. So this way we're using this one, this copy, so we, we can't mess up our main body. Okay, so now we grab our new main body, shift click our object, our sweatshirt that we're trying to change, go to object mode and weight paint, and then go to, and so the item that you're modifying should be blue with these rainbow colors here and there. So in this case, we know we're modifying the sweatshirt, not the body, but even still I've made mistakes. Let's go to weight. Transfer weights, go to active layer and go by name. And I feel like you need to click out in space, but that could just be me. And then go and check it and see how it looks. You can um, go like that. So you can see it's uh, it's got some weird stuff going on there. And that, that happens because the arms are so close. This should, uh, usually people modify in more of an A frame. Um, I like to create more like that, so that it causes these problems. Okay, but everything else seems like it's working pretty good. The shoulders are the hardest part. The, the torso is usually okay. Um, the legs bending up, that's usually a problem, but it's, it looks okay. Okay, so let's go and fix this. Okay, so let's go and do some weight painting. If you have been following along with this series, you already know how to weight paint, so you can... You can probably skip the rest of this video. It's it's nothing really new. It's um, the same weight painting as uh, doing the body and the hair. But if you want to watch, you're more than welcome. And if you're new to this series, then this part you should watch because this is how you do the weight painting to make the clothes fit properly and not do these weird things. Okay. So let's turn on our weight painting layer. I think it's this one here. Yep. And so those are the weight painting bones. Okay, and let's click our rig, shift click our sweatshirt, go to object and weight paint. And so the way the way weight painting works is you um you, you click the various bones, the uh, deformation bones here, and then where it's red, it's where that particular bone is affecting the um, weight of the movement like a lot and yellow is less, blue is much less and dark blue is not at all. So you kind of want to modify the weight of how much this bone influences. So the first thing I think we should fix is these little, little uh, streaks of clothing. So you can click around and see what's affecting it. Okay, so it looks like, looks like this body part here shouldn't be affecting 
these pieces and you can um, toggle x-ray to make it easier to see what's going on okay so I think that's messing with it and so you can go to the um, smudge tool hit F to make that bigger and this kind of smears the weights around so you can do this to reduce the influence so you go you, you take the weights from over here where it's a zero and you kind of smear it down to here where it's probably like a point one and you're kind of reducing those weights okay, and it doesn't look like it's doing much but you can see the color is changing this was a uh, here this is shift Z I think shift Z is wireframe so I have a hotkey for wireframe so in case you're wondering how that's appearing and disappearing it's a it's a hotkey for that okay so that's lower but it looks like it's not doing anything which is kind of funny so we can go here go into the blur tool just blur it a bit and that should pull it up okay, that's a little better and this this well this sweater is not symmetrical so Unfortunately, so that means that if you modify one side, you have to do it to the other side also, because you can see it's not doing anything. It's okay. Okay, so that's coming in a bit, which is nice. Let's check the body here. Let's reduce it some more. Let's go Shift F to make it strong. Just pull that in. Okay, maybe it needs some of this here too. You could use the smear tool for that too instead of the blur tool let's check this one here nope not that one. Oh, okay I was wondering why it's not working because you can see here it's fairly even there it is there it is and I forgot the we have breast bones in this character so this bone here is clearly you can see this is what's messing it up so let's go and smudge this back and that should fix it okay that's that's what I was looking for and here too I think it's a little bit I think this wants to pull up towards the shoulder also so let's pull that out I actually like to start with the blur tool and then go into the smudge later it seems like it just kind of evens things out where'd that go you can see parts of this mesh are symmetrical so if you modify some of it the other side modifies but but the whole thing is not symmetrical so it's not going to totally work okay so let's see how that looks I think this is still pulling out too much so let's go ahead and reduce that so I think the shoulder bone is affecting that too much so let's go ahead and smudge that some more whoops so you can see I went too far so now it's um, not it's a overlapping the body's popping out so let's put that back and you can see these uh loops i'm just trying to get them to be a little bit a little bit more even and i think this is not it's blurred a bit doesn't work it's blurred a bit okay so i think that's kind of okay this is still pulling inwards So let's see if they have the breastbone might still be affecting that so let's get this brush tool here go to tool go to B which is subtract and let's just erase whatever is there let's also get the main torso here and erase whatever is there something is affecting that I'm not I'm not sure what it might just be the shape of it here it might be just the shape of the original mesh that's making that little bump um, but you can check it so when you go to edit mode you can actually check the weights for your mesh however you can see the sweater snapped back so go to your armature turn these on this way it'll stay the um, sweater will stay in place even when you go into edit mode grab a point that you're curious about what the weights are like that go to item and you can see here these are all the weights affecting this particular point so we've got spines here 
You can see this is at 1.3. Maybe that's doing it. Upper arm, that's okay. So I'm going to guess that Def Spine 02 is affecting that. And so if you go here, you can see, okay, so you can see this spine here is affecting that and it shouldn't be. So let's go and erase that. Go to Tool, Subtract, and that should pop it all back in place. And since we're here, let's pull some of this out. Pull some of that out. Smudge tool is a very strange tool. And I think it was the breastbone that was doing most of it, the damage here. So pull that out. Let's just try the blur tool first. That too. Okay, now let's go and get rid of some of this. Tool, subtract, F to make that smaller, and it's too much. And that. Okay. Okay, so that's getting a little bit better. And you can tweak this as long as you want to make it perfect. I'm not going to do it totally perfect, but I am going to fix that and that. So let's get that out of there. Let's see here. Let's check the shoulder smear tool. Let's pull that about back a bit. Let's do the same thing for over here. It's got a little hole there. That worked. No, I didn't like that. I think this is pulling too much also, so let's reduce that a bit. It's kind of like uh, sculpting in the fourth dimension. So you're sculpting but also thinking it's going to be moving while you sculpt. It's tricky. Let's pull that back a bit. That's better. Let's pull this whole area back. And blur it a bit. Okay, it's a little better. Okay, that's okay. Darn it, maybe we need to increase that a bit. You just gotta kind of play with it and try and get it to work. Um, worse comes to worse, you can sometimes add, uh, modify your actual mesh, but you kind of want to save that for the last thing you try and only do it a little bit. Okay, so I think that's okay. Let's check the arms up. That's usually the hardest part and Yeah, okay, that's all right. Let's check the hips here. Hips are usually pretty easy. Uh-oh, that's weird. This might be shoulder bone related. Maybe reduce the body a bit. The tricky thing is whenever you fix it in one pose, you gotta go and check all the other poses to make sure it's all right. Oh, look, we still got some blow through here. And some over here. Reduce that a bit. Let's see here. I wonder if this is the breastbone. Maybe it's the shoulder bone. It's got to go with, no, it's not the shoulder bone. To kind of go through and try and figure out what's causing these things. Sometimes it's this arm here. That might be it. Oops. And the smudge tool is not as good at, at taking everything out, so sometimes you need to use this. Oops, too strong. It's tricky because 
you want to remove some weight to fix it in this position, you want to add in this position. It's kind of driving me bonkers here. Let's see here. Okay, so at this point, it's close, but not quite there, and I'm kind of driving myself crazy. So this is where you can just go to sculpt mode, sculpt mode like that, go to add, reduce this down, and just pop it out just a little bit to just make it easier on yourself. Um, before doing that, you want to make sure it's not going to alter the character. You know, uh, it's, it's not an important part of this character. And in this case, I think it's okay. So that's one way to solve some problems. Let's go through the rest of this here and see how it looks. Hips are pretty easy. Um, the hard part is when the legs bend up, that's hard also. So let's go and check that. It's still checking the shoulders. Okay, so I think the shoulders are good. Oh wait, I just saw something yep, right there. So let's just pop it out just a tiny bit. Okay, now let's go work on the legs. Let's go back to pose mo uh, sculpt mode, uh, weight paint mode. Let's see here. So for this, usually you can blur. And that helps a lot. Just get that to smooth out. And blur these also. The middle gets gets messed up because it because it it thinks it's like it's looking for a mesh like like the same thing as the body, so like pants. So this is kind of like a skirt, and this middle part always gets messed up. So this middle part needs to be fixed. Um, this area here is very finicky, so if it's not poking through, just kind of leave it as much as possible. And you can smooth it a little bit, but try not to mess with it too much. So what you can do here is you can smear some of this down. Let's see, pull some of that back. This you can pull it up. Oh, we didn't blur this one yet. Let's blur that one. Pull that up. So you want this middle part to go with the legs and less with the tor uh, pelvis. So pull that up, pull that up, pull that up. And this one, oops, it's a little better. It's still a little crinkly. This is um, average, it's kind of a different blur tool. It, I believe it averages the weights between whatever it's affecting it. So sometimes that one is good too. I like to start with blur or smudge and use that later. Okay, that's a little better. I mean, you can make, you can make it a lot better than this, but you kind of get the idea of how this thing works. Oh, it's a little weird back here too. Let's fix this. Funny weights. Okay. This is a long sweatshirt, so it's kind of like a dress and you, you could do it, you can do a short dress like this, or you can add bones to uh, to rig it so you can have more control. But for this tutorial, we're just going to follow the body. It's very simple. Okay, I think it's okay. If I was doing this for real, I'd probably put a little more effort into that. 
So that's example one of how to uh, attach clothes to a rig. The uh, example two and three, they're going to be the dress and the shoes. And the reason why I'm showing those is because that's part of the complete character tutorial and that's what we made. So it, it'd be nice just to, to show the whole process. So if you uh, feel like you've got a handle on how to attach clothes now, you're good to go. Just, you know, go and attach some clothes. And if you want to sit here and watch this, then hang out and, and watch me attach some clothes. Okay, let's attach the dress. So we'll grab our dress, shift click our rig, control P, automatic weights, check it and see how it looks. Okay, dress is obviously weird. I'm looking more up here at the chest area and the chest is not working great either. So let's do the weight transfer. So click the body, make sure this is our backup body. Yes, body for weight paint. Shift click our dress, object, uh, object weight paint and weights, transfer weights. And by name, click here. And then let's make sure and see how it looks. And I think that's working better. Got some texture tears in the arm. We'll have to fix that later. So, um, so it looks like the arms are pulling the dress up, but in this case, and the hands, the thumb, I guess, is pulling the dress up. In this case, there might be a fix for it to make our lives easier. So let's grab our body here and let's go to edit mode. Hit L, L, L. Okay, so let's grab those parts of the body and then let's grab the hands also. Go to mesh, separate, selection. Okay, so let's do this. Let's, let's delete the armature. So let's delete that. Go to our um, object data properties. So we're gonna delete what we did when we, we just rigged this dress. Let's let's unrig it. Let's go here and delete all unlocked or delete. Yeah, here we go. So now this has nothing. There's no rigging on this dress at all. Let's see, it's just stays. So let's try and rig the dress just to the body part and not to the arms. So grab the dress. Sh no. Grab the dress, shift click the rig here, control P with automatic weights. Okay, let's check it and see how it looks. Let's go to solid mode. It's actually, it's hard to tell what's going on because these are the same colors. So let's go to like random. Okay, here we go. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so it's the hands are still pulling the dress up and up here it's still not following it correctly. So let's grab the torso part with the arms cut off, shift click the dress, object, weight paint, weights, transfer weights, and by name, click there, go to object mode and let's see how this looks. Okay, that's, I think that's better. Okay. So now let's go and do some weight painting. So let's click here, shift click the dress, object, and weight paint. And let's do the same thing we did for the sweatshirt. Let's just go and kind of like make things a little bit smoother. And let's see if this dress is mirrored. I don't think it is. So I'm just gonna smooth things a bit first. I don't like how wrinkly that is. Smooth, you can put pretty strong. Okay, that's a little better. Let's see, it's making this worse. Smooth this side here. Smooth that there. And that one there. Hmm. Okay, that's all right. Then let's go and fix some of that blow through here. Okay, let's pull this no, down a bit. And then this one too. Pull that down a bit. Okay. Let's see how this works. This is that same problem we had with the uh, sweatshirt. You want it to uh, 
pull it down to fix that. You want to pull it up to fix it over here. So last time we modified the dress, the sweatshirt, we could just really zoom in and see if that works. No. Nope. So you might have to just modify this dress a little bit. And let's see here. This side's actually a little bit better. It's so close. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to just going to tweak the dress. Sculpt mode, brush, tool, plus, 0.1, it's okay. Oops, let's turn off the mirror. Let's just add a tiny bit. It's a little bit of cheating. It's like here it's going through a bit there. And a bit there. Oh, and a bit here too. Okay, a little bit of cheating, it's okay. Okay, so I think the arms are all good. Let's fix the um, legs of the dress here. Okay, so let's fix it here first. You know, let's, um, I want to get a little bit more animation for the legs. So let's go to item and go to leg um, IK, pose mode, and let's go here. And let's do this a bit. So we can see when the legs spread what happens in the dress here. Then let's go back to our weight painting layer, grab our dress, object, weight paint. Okay. And let's go back to our blur tool, F, Shift F, and just blur the material between the legs so it just gets more even. Let's pull this up a bit. Same here, same there. It's got some funny wrinkles there. So we kind of don't want to mess with the area right to where the legs bend. It's not super great, but up here, this, this wrinkle looks bad. So let's go and fix that. Let's do the same thing over here. You can see the green is the body poking through. I'll have to fix that. But I don't like these um, strange wrinkles. Okay, that's a little, it's a little better. Um, let's go to the smear tool. Let's remove this little um, how the material pulls down. Let's get rid of that. So let's either add some of the legs weights or take away some of the pelvis weights. If you add too much weights, you'll start to blow through the pelvis. So it's kind of a balancing act. Let's try this average tool. Okay. Let's fix the middle part of the dress more. Let's average that out like that. Oh, there it goes. It was pinching a bit, so let's smooth that out also. I'm not sure what's causing that little divot. Okay, it was the, there must be a faint amount of weight there. So let's go and get rid of it. Tool minus, oops, yeah, it's a little better. Let's fix the back. That should be wrinkly also. So let's see here. Oh, so silly. Well, when I had the legs go apart, I didn't set a keyframe because this was not turned on. So let's go back, let's go back here, pose mode. Leg IK, G, okay, there we go. So now we have an IK set for that. Okay, let's try again. Object, weight paint, and let's smooth out back here too. Um, let's go to pose mode, let's turn off leg IK. Weight paint, okay. 
smooth that all out. Smooth that all out here. Same thing over here. Same thing over there. So it just kind of all blends better. You can see here the um, skin's poking through a bit. It's a little bit wrinkly too. So let's smooth some of this out. I'm toggling constantly so I can catch the reflections and see how it looks. When you smooth, you'll probably find a bone that messes things up like that. So be wary of that. Let's actually smooth in between the two sides like that. Okay. And let's fix these little um, poking through with the smudge tool. Let's pull that down a bit and grab this leg and pull it down a bit. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. All right. So I think that is good. Let's go to object mode here and let's add these shoes. For the shoes, we should also animate the toes. So let's go to leg IK, turn these on. Let's go to pose mode. Let's go all the way to the end. And let's go, let's see here. Alt GRS. Then let's go to 190. Alt GRS. It's weird. G R S. Okay. R X. Make these go down here. A I location rotation scale. And let's go to 200. Let's grab the toes only. Go to R X. And R X. Okay. Let's turn off our leg IKs and go back to here and let's attach these shoes. So let's grab our, let's, uh, let's, I can't see the shoes are the same color. Let's go to random. No. Let's go to Object, Viewport Display. Where is Viewport Display? Here we go. Let's make these pinkish. There we go. So click the shoes, shift click the rig, object, sorry. Click the rig, shift click the shoes, object, and weight paint. You see how I just reversed that? I've done this a million times, but for me, I, I still get them flipped. And that's how you can also mess up your when you're way painting, that's how you can mess up your rig. So definitely make a backup. Don't uh, use your main body. Okay, so let's grab our shoes, shift click our rig, control P, automatic weights. Let's check it and see how it looks. And we've got some parts not attaching, that's okay. That's uh. That's, this happens a lot when you have, when you're attaching something with multiple pieces, that, that kind of just happens. We can fix that. Let's check the toes. Yeah, it's not, not so great. So now let's grab our mesh. Let's make sure it's the weight painting one. Shift click our shoes, object, weight paint, weight, chanter weights. Make sure this is by name, click off. And let's see how this looks. Is it better? Yeah. All right. I think that's better. It's actually, it's actually, it's actually pretty good. Oh, our toes are poking through. I find this happens a lot. And for me, the way I usually fix it is I, I apply a shape key to the body or someone just taught me a new method. So I'll show you those as an option, but let's first try and improve this because I think it could be a little bit better. 
but I think this could be smoother. So let's go and click our rig, shift click our shoes, object and weight paint. And let's click the toe bone here. Let's go here so it's faster. And let's just blur that a bit. And blur that a bit. Okay, let's do the same thing here. Blur that a bit. And grab your toe and blur that a bit. Okay, I think uh, that's about it. I can show you the fix for those toes. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do that next. So a lot of times you'll get the body poking through your mesh. Um, we saw that up on the dress here. And um, besides weight painting, I just I puffed the dress out right there, and it, it fixed it, which is not great. Um, there's other ways to solve this, and so these two, I'll, I'll show you two solutions. These two solutions can also solve the body poking through. Um, we're going to do it just, just for the toes here, but you can use this wherever you want to on your mesh, that, that it's poking through clothing. So the first is to create a shape key. So you can go uh, grab your mesh, and then go to the object data properties, click plus, and you'll get this basis. So this is a, a shape key group. That's the, your, your basic model. It's the way you had it. It's the way you have the model right now. It's the basic shape. You can make a second one. We'll call this um, shrink toes. Set this to one. So we're going to make a modified version of the mesh. And with this, we're going to shrink the toes. So object sculpt mode. Click this here, click tool, click minus F to make that bigger. And let's just shrink the toes. So now they're inside the shoes. Okay, so now that's covered up. Um, and that, that's one way to that's one way to make the body fit clothing if you don't want to modify the clothing too much. Okay, so let's turn this off. Make sure we have basis selected and let's go to where you can see the toes poking through. So this is the other method to um, hide parts of the body poking through. Let's go to edit mode and let's go and add a modifier. Let's call this the mask modifier here. Click these to make sure it's turned on. Go to object data properties, click plus call this mask toes. Okay, so what we're going to do is select the parts we want hidden. So it's the toes. Don't select too much. Maybe over here. Maybe over there too. Okay. And then go make sure you have this mask um, selected and go to remove. Sorry, control I and assign. And go to control I and remove. And then go and select that mask. So we'll type in mask toes. And then the toes disappear. And it looks like we picked too much. So we're going to go back to our object data properties. And let's see here. We want to unremove. So let's turn that off. And let's go back to here and click Assign. So that way everything is visible. And then let's unselect some of these up here. And select some of those. Okay. And then click remove. And turn that back on. And we still have some blow through here. So let's do it again. 
Let's unselect some of those. Unselect some of those. And then go to here and control control I assign, control I remove. Go back to here, turn that on. And now we're good. It's it's kind of a weird it's kind of weird the way it works. You want to assign all of the faces or vertexes that you want to be visible and remove the ones you want to be invisible. So, but th this is a good way to um, to hide parts of the geometry that's poking through also. So either, either way, they both work. Pick what's good for you. Okay. I think she is, I think our character is rigged. All right. So that is it for our video today. And that is it for this series. For those of you who have stuck around this whole time, congratulations. You now have a fully rigged character with clothing and hair and all the works. Um, so you should be proud of that. So give yourself a pat in the back. For the people that are new to this series, I hope this was helpful to you. And for everybody, this is not the end of the tutorials. So if there's something you want to learn, let me know. Thank you for listening. I really hope this helped you. And as always, like, subscribe, support me on Patreon, or if you want to see what things I'm working on, you can check me out on Instagram. Hope to hear from you soon.